Yeah, hello everyone. My name is Martin Schoeffler. I'm product manager at Asapio, um, responsible for the Asapio integration add-on. And today I want to uh, showcase you a new connector feature that we have for connecting your SAP system to Microsoft Fabric um, using our add-on. And I will start with a few slides uh, in the beginning, how the, how the integration add-on works um, and what is specific for the connector uh, to Microsoft Fabric. And then how give you a, a real life demo on how it is configured and how it how it works all together. Mm. Yep. So the um, the solution we want to show you is the SAP integration add-on with the new connector for Microsoft Fabric. So you you might know or you might not, but uh, the SAP integration add-on is a, is a, a time-tested uh, framework that's already in the market for, for quite some years. Um, it is an ABAP-based add-on that works on um, any ABAP-based system. So it could be an ECC system, it could be a S4 HANA system on-prem, could be in the private cloud, could also be a, uh, a RISE with SAP system. Um, and it can also be any of the other legacy NetWeaver-based systems like a CRM or an SRM um, that you might still have running somewhere. Um, so the important factor is that it runs on the ABAP, uh, on the ABAP stack. Um, and yeah, details you can get from the, from the website on the exact versions, but it runs on pretty old uh, sub-ECC systems as well. Um, and being on the SAP ABAP stack gives the add-on a few um, advantages that you cannot get if you are outside and if you are some middleware, because we we sit on the ABAP stack and can get notifications of changes um, that only happen on the ABAP stack that are not exposed to the outside world, um, not with without the integration add-on at least and can expose those um, things to, to, um, to the cloud services that we connect to. Um, yeah, the framework offers uh, various features to configure what, what payload should be sent to the, to the cloud and in which mode it should run. So it could be that it reacts in real time to events happening on the SAP system. Uh, like a sales order is created or changed, and it can communicate that immediately, or it can also run in a batch mode where changes are more collected and then sent in one in one batch run, or can also do a initial load, like if you want to prime your cloud system with with historic data, you can also do that with the framework, and we will go into that uh, into in the later slides as well. Um, so the the connector we have is basically the Azure connector we already had. So previously we connected against the event uh, services from Microsoft Azure, so the event grid, event hub, and the service bus. And there were quite a few customers that were utilizing that not only for for the application integration where we are coming from, but also for more analytics based use cases. Um, where the analytics scenarios were just additional consumers for these events. Um, and uh, together with Microsoft, we, uh, we had uh, seen that need to probably make a more direct connection into these analytics uh, platforms. And that's what we did with the new, with the new Fabric Connector. Um, so as I said, the new Fabric connector is part of the existing Azure connector. So if you already have the Azure connector, you can uh, you can download the update um, that's out since uh, uh, since two weeks. Um, that that will contain the Fabric connector. Um, if you are new, you can uh, yeah I will have a, a web, website link. Um, where you get all the information and where you can get trial licenses and stuff like that. Um, yeah, 
Uh, and on the website, you also get in the documentation, you get also the, get details on the prerequisites. Um, what are the exact prerequisites for your for your SAP system? So this more direct connectivity now has uh, will accelerate how you can build up these kind of uh, more analytics scenarios um, that some of our customers already were running using the event services um, uh, by directly connecting to to Microsoft Fabric. And when I say we are connecting to Microsoft Fabric, then uh, technically, that means we are landing the data in the one lake. So one lake is basically the the foundation um, of everything uh, of every service that is part of the Microsoft Fabric um, um, offering, and we can feed that data now into that one one lake, and we have some initial features now for that initial release. So currently, the supported format is CSV. Um, we offer batch or delta loads um, from the from the data we send, and um, that CSV files that we that we land in that one lake, they will be imported uh, with a notebook inside the Fabric workspace. Um, so this is the first step, and we are already working on more advanced. Things like uh, uh, supporting the parquet format to allow for generic mirroring to be utilized inside the one lake, and um, one one other thing that we are working on is the predefined content packages that we uh, that we plan to offer as a download as well. Um, this probably makes more sense once you have seen the demo and how it works. Um, because you have to do some configuration on the SAP side at the moment, and we see pre pre configured content from uh, that you can then download from our site. Um, you can reduce the the effort that you have to do the configuration you have to do on the SAP side um, by already tested uh, content that will that will build the payloads for your one lake. Yeah, and with that, I think it makes most sense to directly jump into a quick live demo. Because live demos are always where it's easiest understood how how the how the feature works. Um, so first of all, I want to go into our fabric um, workspace, um, where where we have various things that we can uh, check. So. Uh, we have here a workspace and a lake house where there are folders where our data is coming in. So currently that folder is empty. Um, so all, all data has already been imported that, that has been there before. And we have tables where the data is landing. And so uh, we're gonna showcase a sales order scenario. So that is the data that we are uh, that we're gonna gonna check in our in our demo and uh, with these two things there is a there is also a notebook it is currently scheduled to run um, every minute um, uh, to 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 be responsive for the for the demo um, and this basically you configure which uh, which table is connected to which of these folders in the in the uh, in the one lake lake house here, um, and now um, to jump to the to the SAP side. So the uh, we have installed the add-on on one of our S4 systems, and um, we have configured it to connect against the Fabric um, instance that we just saw. Um, what? So, perhaps we just show, show the interfaces fabric. Um, yeah, probably I have to refresh that Fury app. Um, so this is a better app that we have. Uh, it's not released yet, 
but uh, it is coming in the fall release, um, but still it is easier to showcase or it's more clear on how the configuration looks like. So uh, we have here a connection to our uh, to our fabric space. And as this is basically the Azure connector, we have to tell it, okay, it is a service type Blackhouse that we connect to. We have some authentication information like the client ID. The, if you're wondering about the secret that is stored in the secure store, um, so you can't see it here. Um, and uh, it connects, so it authenticates via, via OAuth. That's the available authentication for, for the lake houses. Um, and we then configure interfaces. And we configured one initial load that we already let run where all our sales orders get, get uploaded. And we have a, a, uh, a delta load where we load every change to a sales order also to the same to the same target zone. And um, for the configuration, so you basically have multiple options in the framework. The typical one and the one we will provide as a, as a download is a payload design. Um, we will go into that in, in a second where you define how the payload looks like. And you then define here the payload design, view name and the version. And the rest will be filled automatically. So there is a, um, an extraction function and a formatting function. Um, and these are things that would probably change. For example, if we support the parquet format, there will be a separate format uh, for the parquet format. Um, yeah. And with that configuration, we, we can link what happens in an SAP system. So this is the event linkage where if any sales order changes or is created, this interface will be fired and will extract the payload as defined in the payload design. And then it will send it to a specific folder in our lake house. Um, you also have to uh, extract some of the IDs for the lake house and the workspace here, because that is needed in the API, um, just to configure where the data should land. Um, and now with all that configuration done, uh, we can check how the payload should look like. So we go into our SAP system and go into our payload design and transaction. So I'm starting with the with our S4 system here and going into the what we call the payload designer. And yeah, I already pre-selected the um, the payload for the sales order that we we're gonna use. And we just combined basically header information and item int information into one interface. So we we selected these two tables. Um, there's also a, a join builder that helps you uh, defining how they should be joined together. And um, then we selected fields that we want to have in our payload. And so we selected a few fields. Um, you can rename the fields. You can also, if you have key fields, key fields will always be in there. Um, if you have, based on your joins, have key fields that you don't want in the output, you can also skip that, like, like the client, if you only have one, one SAP system connected. Uh, and only one client connected is probably not relevant for the output. Um, you can skip that, or uh, most important is the renaming feature. So you can always rename how they look like in your payload. And this also translates how how they will look in your in your table that they are landed in. So um, the table is built based on the on the field names that you that you see here. So, and this is a this is a thing that was configured in that interface configuration to to send exactly these fields uh, out of these tables, and um, um, that that builds then the payload that we sent. So with all that said and done, we can we can test it out and see if we can make a change uh, to a sales order. So I have an existing sales order. 
Um, that is probably already loaded, but what we can do is that we can make a, a change to the order quantity so that we um, increase the order by 1,000 uh, bikes that we are ordering here. And we will save that, have to confirm that here. Um, yeah, there's also some, some credit check going on. And now we saved our our order, and that would mean it will it is already sent to um, to the lake house. So we can now check in our lake house and refresh that folder, and we will see. Okay, there's a new file here, and it will now be picked up by our notebook that is scheduled in the background to run every minute. Um, and while we are waiting, so we can also check. The contents of the file, so we can see it's our sales order here, and I don't know where the um, where the quantity is here in the end. So the quantity is now one thousand one hundred fifty, and that should now also be um, imported by the notebook. Um, and while we are waiting for the notebook to run, we can also check on the SAP side. The add-on itself also has monitoring capabilities. Um, that I want to quickly showcase. So there's a separate transaction. Um, we are interested in our connection to Fabric here. And we see we, we did a few tests before, and this uh, 20 past four my time is what we, what we currently sent. Um, and you can see you can activate your tracing to see what has actually happened. You, you see on the first uh, line here already if it was um, successful or not. So the Lakers will answer with a 202 when we, when we, when we push the file. And uh, if there would be any error, you would, you would typically see it here in the cloud response already. And um, the tracing will turn on for those automatically so that you have an easier time troubleshooting stuff um, when, when there are intermittent errors or some connectivity errors. Um, but for this one, all did go, go right. If it, if it would have failed, the framework keeps uh, what we call a change pointer or what is also in other parts of SAP called a change pointer to to keep track of what has still to be sent. So we only confirm our change pointer when, when we send it successful. So we will know we still have to send that data if it, if it would have returned an error. And it's also logging stuff into the standard SLG1 log. So in this case, um, that's not really interesting if there would be some errors might be more interesting to see what has happened there. Um, and typically reprocessing would be done automatically by a scheduled background shop as well, uh, but you would have options to also do it manually by going here into that monitor and do that. So let's quickly get back to our, our Lakers and check if the uh, file has been imported already. Um, so we can see when once we have imported our notebook will uh, will remove the file, and now it is part of the of the database. And we also created a, a small simple report um, to to showcase what you what you could do with your data, and to probably have to refresh all the numbers. And yeah, I did not point it out before, but you should have kept track on the on today's value. So this did jump quite a bit uh, by 1 million about um, to the top here. Um, but this is one, one thing you could do with your, with your data that you analyze the data. Um, yes, so... Um, Good, and then coming back to some uh, more slides before we get to the Q&A. Um, just to recap what we, what we have seen. So 
Um, the tool supports batch and delta loads. So what I what I did not explain yet is the initial load concept we have, which is quite powerful. So initial loads inside the SAP integration add-on run uh, multi-threaded from within the SAP system. So you basically schedule it just like you see in, uh, in the configuration. Uh, we actually have a configuration as well that we can look at while, we, while we're talking. So it is pretty similar configuration. It also says we are loading data via the payload designer. Um, there are these function modules. Um, the only thing that's different is that there are additional attributes to configure how big each package should be for that initial load. So in this instance, we, we are sending 5,000 sales orders in one file. Um, but uh, so this is where you how you can configure how big the packages will be. And with the multi-threading, you um, there's a transaction to, to start that or a, a report to start the initial load. And there you have to configure what is a SAP server group that will protect your SAP system from, from being overloaded by the initial load because yeah, the framework would be would be efficient enough to uh, to start a lot of processes and to to get the the system to its to its uh, to its max capacity. But uh, with the server group, you are in control and your your SAP administrators can uh, can dial in how much processes, how much how much processing power the add-on gets for that initial load. And then you can load all the data quite quickly into, into the Lakehouse uh, folders. Um, um, so we, we did not do very large scale uh, tests yet with the Lakehouses, but with other tests on the framework, um, we found that you can go pretty fast, you can load like uh, one example where sales orders have been loaded was uh, 16 million sales orders with all adjacent data. So partner information, item information, scheduling information, all that together. Um, it was a data size of six and a half gigabytes of data. Uh, we did run that in a little less than 40 minutes. So you can load a lot of data in uh, using the framework, and that is also what you can do with um, to 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 prime um, the lakehouse to to really send all the all the stuff you have in your SAP system in an in an initial load, and then turn on these more event based uh, change captures and data loads um, to to update the data. Um, and keep it up to date as well. So, and the framework will basically just multi-thread. So it will create multiple processes uh, with each process um, dealing with 5,000 sales orders, basically, um, in that instance here. Um, yep, and uh, yeah, that was the multi-threading uh, that I wanted to explain here. And all the all the data configuration that you saw in the payload designer, so it's all just configuration. You can also just plug in in the in the configurations any single database table or a CDS view to be the the basis for the for the payload that you send. Um, so that you can also um, easily add additional data um, just via configuration in that framework. So you don't have to code anything to, to make anything available, um, but you can utilize what you already have as a CDS view or as a database view, um, and you can plug it either directly into the configuration or into the payload designer to make a more complex payload. Um, yeah, one thing I wanted to still point out, and I think we still have time for that, is how does the how does the delta work with the with the with the integration add-on? And being a part of the SAP system, we rely on triggers that the application layer does give us. So um, there are 
various triggers that a standard SAP system offers out of the box. So there are like business object events or, or pretty well known thing or change documents. So whenever important tables are changed, there typically is a change document covering the, the change and uh, um, writing basically a, a uh, kind of a log who, who changed it and when. Um, this can also be used as a trigger. And there are numerous other triggers that the application layer gives, like a status change or um, uh, like there are also business transaction events, which are uh, similar to the business object events. Those can all be used as a trigger to that the integration add-on knows there's some, some change has happened and we have to upload data. Um, and when that happens, then the data extraction kicks in based on the payload designer or on a database or CDS view, and it will then create the payload. So currently, for the Fabric Connected, it creates a CSV file with the data in it. Um, there are also options to create a JSON uh, of the data, more for the event use cases, where you, where you connect to the event services uh, on the Azure side. And then it does, uh, yeah, that's the actual sending of the data. So this is what we call the connector. So it knows how to authenticate correctly um, and ease the configuration a little bit that you don't have to know about the complex API endpoints that are have to be called. Um, and with all the handling of the failed calls and so, and so on, we, we support an at least once strategy. So the endpoint confirms successful receival of the data, then we, we know we have sent it successfully. So with all that said, um, I think I'm done with my overview and we can go into the Q&A section. Um, one last point on how where to get additional information. Um, uh, so you probably registered at that at that page already, but this basically is a landing page for the Fabric Connector. Um, it will have all these options to book a, a dedicated demo and Q&A session uh, together with us, or also to get an evaluation version of the, of the software that you can install in your own SAP system, in your own environment, try things out and get a feeling of how the, how the, how the solution works. And you can also get us from the Azure Marketplace as well. So thank you for 